What's going on everybody? So I'm gonna drop this right at the very beginning of the video. I just finished recording this video, but it's gonna just gonna be a quick announcement. The DJI Osmos Pocket 3 is a great vlogging tool. It's also an excellent tool to get started with the video podcast. And on approved credits, you can get it for as low as 50 bucks a month going through Best Buy or through Amazon. And that's gonna be one of the recommendations that I left out on this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss this into the very beginning of the video. And also at the very end of the video, after I'm done with the recordings while I'm wearing this lovely red shirt and done hiking and all that good stuff, uh, there's going to be a video off of my ministry podcast, and I, well, I wouldn't say it a ministry, it's a ministry podcast, it's a ministry YouTube channel that's separate from my business channel, which is the one that you're on right now, and what that is is like an example of what it looks like having a uh, good lighting. I've got a key light set up, I've got the background lighting set up, I've got the Sure 7 SMB that I'm going to be discussing or speaking about in the through the midst of this video. And it's all hooked up to the Zoom F6, which is the field recorder that I'm going to recommend in this video. And it's all edited, uh, this included, and everything else all going to be edited off of uh, DaVinci Resolve just because I've been getting more into color grading. And I also use Premiere Pro, uh, like Premiere, uh, excuse me, Premiere Pro, Some I used to use it initially. I still use Dabble in it here and there, but I primarily use Adobe Audition, which is part of the package. It comes with it. But... Now I'm starting to ramble, and so y'all take it easy. God bless. Enjoy the video, and uh, have a lot of fun making your podcast. You're going to do great, I believe. You. What's going on, everybody? So I figured I'd try something a little bit different this time. Some of the stuff that I'm going to recommend as far as audio equipment and camera equipment and even microphone is what I'm using right now. At the end of this video, oh, man, that's pretty cool. At the end of this video, I'm going to drop a clip and it's going to show what a podcast will look like in a controlled environment with uh, some of the equipment that I'm going to be recommending, such as the Sure 7 SMB. In this video, I'm also going to be telling you ways to start your podcast audio only, ways to start it with video, how to start it for free, and also if you really want to get it out there and you want to potentially get it monetized, what that looks like and also what monetization looks like and some uh, key elements that you're going to need to keep in mind in order for all that to take place. But first, without further ado, let's take a look at this. Let's see here, we're out here at Bastrop State Park. All right, let's see here. Well, to be honest with y'all, that uh, trail looks a little rockier than what I was thinking. And what was I thinking? I knew it was a trail, I knew it was gonna be rocky, but luckily I got something that people is gonna go hiking is typically gonna need. Ba, ba, ba. And that is, let's see here, hiking shoes. All right, baby, well, y'all stand by. I'm going to put these bad boys on, and I'll get back to the video. All right, cool. Well, first things first, I want to apologize for the wind that more likely than not is going to be integrated with this video, but how do you make a lifelike video without? All right, cool. So what's going on guys? So the whole reason you clicked on this video, I would imagine, is because you want to start a podcast. And there's a multiple different reasons why you might want to start start podcasting. Maybe you just want to get something off your chest. Maybe ideally you want to help other people out or potentially you want to do those two, but you also want to make the money, right? So in this, in this uh, episode, what I'm going to show y'all or tell y'all about is what you're going to need in order to successfully start a podcast, how to do it for free, or if you got a little bit of financials, you know, financial backing or a little bit of pocket change, uh, you could take it to the next level and invest a little bit. Now, ultimately, the biggest way that you're going to grow your podcast is not just by throwing money at it. The biggest thing is just going to be consistency. So if you're going to start a podcast and your overall goal is to grow your target audience and to grow your podcast and potentially monetize it, the biggest thing you have to keep in mind is it's all about consistency, number one. And number two, more times than not, it's not going to happen 
overnight, just like anything else in life. So with all that being said, uh, the first thing that I'm going to recommend for y'all to get is actually one of the sponsors for today's video. It's called Budsprout. So what Budsprout does is it makes starting a podcast super easy. You could do it as, as little as zero dollars and zero cents. So essentially you could start it for free. And the benefit to that, obviously, is let's say you don't have any of the microphones or you don't have the funds to get any of the microphones I'm going to recommend in this video. Let's say you don't have really almost any funds at all. To start a podcast, you could do it literally with the phone inside of your pocket. And I'll even recommend a few uh, DAWs, digital audio workstations, that you could use to edit the vocals completely free of charge and get started literally with nothing in your pocket. Now, whenever you're ready to scale your podcast, whenever you're ready to grow it, whenever you have more content that you want to get put out on a regular basis, and when you have content that you want to not just put out there, but keep out there, Buzzsprout has packages pretty much for everybody for the entry level podcaster because keep in mind on the free one they will help you distribute it to spotify apple podcast google podcast all the major platforms they will be hosted for about i want to say 90 days and all these are all these terms are subject to change i mean they could i guess potentially in theory they own the company one day decide hey we're going to host them indefinitely as of right now for free which you can't beat free uh, they'll host your episodes, get your name out there and all that good stuff, but they'll be hosted for 90 days. So what does that mean for you? It means you can get your free 90 day run in say, Hey, am I growing an audience? Do I have people that are interested in the stuff that I'm making to the point to where I'm constantly having to re upload my episodes, uh, and kind of figure out if podcasting is really for me or if this is something I want to do. Um, Hey, you know, 90 days, you got 90 days to kind of like try before you buy, I guess, so to say. Now, whenever you're ready to ump the ante, the cool thing with Buzzsprout is they have packages and none of them are super expensive. None of them are going to break the bank. You have it to where they can host on all these different platforms and keep the episodes up indefinitely. Uh, the prices vary depending on how many hours of content each month that you put out. So if your podcast episodes are 30 minutes, excuse me, 30 minutes each, and you're posting one every other day you know they have a uh, they have a package that's perfect for you because each month you have about roughly three hours worth of uh episodes that you can post and they they'll keep them up and all that inside of there they'll once you start getting things going they also have packages to where they can help you with uh sponsors help you get monetized and everything like that um all in all it's a great service i've been using buzzsprout for the how you do that podcast for for years now, literally years, and it's been great for me. It's been great for the fans, the people that love the show. Uh, they break it all down. They show you where your fan base is at. You know, I personally, I'm from Texas, so I thought that 90%, like 90 to 100% of the fan base is going to be from Texas. However, I, we got pretty loyal listeners that tune in from uh, Iowa, Ohio, over from Germany. Uh, we have a few over in China that listen pretty regularly, and over in. Uh, just different countries so the cool thing with the uh, platform is that they'll give you all the breakdowns all the different demographics that they can get to the best of their ability which in turn again if you're looking to monetize your podcast getting all that information can help you pitch your company to sponsors and also help you real kind of gauge and say okay this is what will work best <clears throat> excuse me this is what what will work best for my audience this is what they potentially may be interested in this is what they may not be interested in so all that keep all that in mind that's the first step is obviously getting a hosting platform to get it all going all right sorry about that guys excuse me all right cool so that's all you need to get started and get going sorry about that guys i'm out here in the wild literally you know so it's hard to sit still when you got all this beautiful nature around you but now that you've got your hosting situation taken care of, the next step is going to be finding a microphone. Now, typically people think of podcasting, they think of a couple big names, they think of Joe Rogan, you know, they think of Jordan Peterson, they think of, you know, the Becoming Something podcast with Jonathan Pakluda. All these different names ring in my, uh, come to mind. One thing that a lot of those podcasts all have in common is, is the type of microphone that they use. Uh, most of those podcasts use the Shure 7 SMB. It's the same microphone that I believe Logic uses. It's the same microphone that Michael Jackson used to record the Thriller album. And it's also a very popular microphone for podcasts, radio, all sorts of different stuff. And the great thing with that microphone 
is it's very consumer friendly as far as like the budget. I'm not sure what your budget is. Everybody has a different amount that, you know, they can freely spend for side hustles or just for whatever. But the great thing with that mic is it doesn't really break the bank. You're not spending two grand, you're not spending 4,000, you're not even spending a thousand bucks. When I got my mic, I got it brand new. I got it on sale. And if I remember correctly, I can't remember if it was Black Friday or what it was, but I got it from a uh, a supply store and I got it for only $2.59. And the mic, I believe, normally retails for about $3.99, somewhere $3.49, somewhere around that range. Um, and it's, it's worth every single penny. Now, since this video has come out, since I've started my podcast, uh, Sure has recently come out with a new type of microphone that's pretty much the exact same thing, but it has what's called a preamp built inside of it. And that's gonna bring me to the next thing that you're gonna need. So let's say you go with the Shure 7 s and microphone, or you go with one of the budget mics that I have listed below. Um, a lot of them are gonna require a preamp. With the Shure 7 s and you're gonna need either a FET head or a cloud lifter. Me personally, I prefer the FET head. You know, why do I prefer the FET head? Well, I prefer the FET head because unlike a cloud lifter, you don't need an additional XLR cable. You know, when you use a cloud lifter, one end of your XLR cable is gonna go into the cloud lifter, then you gotta get another XLR cable that's gonna go into the other end of the XLR cable. I mean, to the cloud lifter, and then that plugs into your field recorder or whatever it is that you're using to plug your XLR in. For the mic with the fet head it just plugs into one end you plug that in into your uh, your recording source or your your field recorder which is what i would probably recommend the most and you know you, you forget about it you're done so you since you don't have to buy an extra xlr which there's the price ranges on those vary uh, i would highly recommend against cheaping out on those you can get one like a high tier high quality one for like as low as 50 bucks 40 bucks 60 bucks uh, but just just don't cheap out on them because the worst thing you could do is have a great microphone great field recorder and something great to say for your audience but then have it all lost because your xlr cable just takes a dump on you you know or or just messes all the audio up so small it's a one-time investment it's definitely worth it if you get a quality xlr if you get a quality mic if you get a great field recorder and all this good all that good stuff you will uh You'll thank me in the long run. You'll thank yourself in the long run because it'll be less headache, you know, less to replace and less to deal with in post. Which brings me to my next topic. Do you have to spend $400, $1,000, or a crazy amount of money on a uh, microphone or on other products to get great audio? Well, the simplest answer to that is absolutely not. You don't. If you're, if you're pretty handy or if you don't mind putting in the work using a digital audio workstation, a DAW, which there's, a, there's some that are out there for free and I'll put links to them and I'll describe them a little bit below in the comments uh, or in the description bar, I'm sorry. But if you don't mind putting in the work, you can actually get some pretty decent audio coming directly out of your phone. Uh, before purchasing your mic, you also, you're also going to want to ask yourself, you know, where, where are you going to be recording most of the time? Are you going to re be recording in a uh, sound-treated room or a room, ideally, that will eventually become sound-treated? Are you going to be recording the, your podcast out on the go? Are you going to be like a, a travel vlogger or somebody that, that, that can just whip out a microphone and record right there on the spot? Because if that's the case, uh, Sure also makes another microphone. I want to say it's 199 150 something like that. Superb quality, and it plugs right into your cell phone. If you don't have, if you don't plan on have incorporating video, then it could be an ideal situation for you. And if you don't incorporate video, could you still have your podcast on YouTube? Well, the answer to that is absolutely 100% yes, because all you'd have to do is create a really cool thumbnail, get some cool pictures of the subject or of your podcast, and just create like some gifts or some art, something to keep the viewer entertained if they wanted something to actually look at while you're going over and speaking, and go or you could just you know, have, have your company logo as you're speaking. Um, but I guess that will go into the next topic. And that is uh, visuals. Your podcast, is it going to be strictly audio, like a traditional radio station, or are you going to move into the, uh, to the, the segment that so many people are jumping into nowadays, which is vlogging or video podcasting? I will say this, video podcasting is growing exponentially. You know, it's grown so much that YouTube, a conglomerate owned by Google, 
even started their own podcasting section. If you go on to youtube.com, you'll even see they have their very own podcasting set section. Uh, if you go to ours, which you're probably, you're probably familiar with, but if you go to Square Sauce Media, you go to the podcast, you'll see a lot of our podcast episodes. Every single one of our new ones now have video incorporated into it. It's what the industry is all chasing. It's what everybody loves. It's what everybody is, is leaning in towards. However, there is still a very, very large audience for audio-only podcasts. So keep all that in mind. If you don't have a video camera right now or if you don't have a visual solution right now, it's not the end of the world. You could always uh, add that in later on. That's what we did when we started our podcast. It was strictly audio only. So you could find it. You'll find a lot more episodes for our podcast on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, on Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, all the major po- platforms. All you have to do is go on there and search how you do that podcast. You know, that podcast, again, is how you do that podcast starring Seth Boone. Uh, spoiler alert, there's going to be a major announcement pretty soon. And I'm, I'm y'all, since y'all are watching this video, I'll go ahead and give y'all the uh, give y'all the inside scoop. Seth Boone's real name is not Seth Boone, it's Michael. <laughs> anyway, it's me. I was, Seth Boone was a stage name that I was going by. And I figured... Ideally, when that show blows up, like David Letterman or, or, you know, one of the greats, uh, like Joe Rogan, you know, all that good stuff, having a stage name would prepare me to be able to take advantage of different tax purposes, you know, I don't know. There, there's a lot into it on why there was, why I had a stage name, and I've been mulling it over, I've been thinking about it, and I've come to the final conclusion that I'm dropping the stage name, I'm going by Michael Renfro, baby. All right, now that we've gotten off of that, let's see, what else are you going to need when starting a podcast? This next thing is something a lot of people typically don't think about, but it is going to be pivotal, it's going to, or pivotal and it's going to be very important in uh, recording your podcast if you want to do it with a, quote, professional grade uh, microphone. And that's going to be what you use to record your episodes with. What field recorder are you going to plug it into a source that goes into a laptop? all that. Now, I personally use a Zoom F6. And if you plan on having tons of hosts on your show, if you plan on needing multiple outlets, the cool thing with the Zoom F6 is number one, it has a feature called 32-bit flow. No matter what field recorder you use, and I'll give you a list of different options down in the description below, uh, no matter what field recorder that you use, Make sure it has 32-bit flow. The reason being is because 32-bit flow is very forgiving whenever you're recording your audio. Let's say that you got guests in the studio. You're saying something, they're saying something, and out of nowhere, they they say something that's absolutely hilarious, or they say something shocking, or they say something super revealing. You're like, oh my goodness. And the whole studio erupts in either laughter, screaming, or whatever that could just completely be an absolute nightmare in post to edit out because everybody and their mother is clipping, right? Well, the cool thing with a 32-bit float is in post, it gives you not an indefinite ceiling and an indefinite floor, but as close as you can theoretically get to it. So it's great for audio levels. It's great for keeping all that in check. So definitely, if you're going to get a field recorder, if you, ha- if you plan on having more than two hosts or three people, definitely go with the Zoom F6. Uh, My second recommendation, it's a lot more compact. It's very light. It's very small. Uh, That's the Zoom F3. So if it's going to be you and a host, maybe one other person, the Zoom F3, like the name implies, gives you the ability to have three microphones hooked up to it. It has 32-bit flow. It's got a lot of great stuff going for it. So I'll leave the links in the description below for those right there. Let's see. And what else are you going to need? Well, you're going to need something to hold these microphones. And that's one of those things that you think is pretty just self-explanatory. It'll be a very easy, very quick process to just pick something out. You just go on there, pick out something cheap to hold it, right? Wrong. (laughs) So there's a lot of different type of microphone holders out there. Uh, I made the mistake of cheaping out on a micro uh, on a microphone arm that would have done great if I would have used one of the smaller microphones but seeing as the sure 7 SMB is kind of heavy uh, there's certain angles that I cannot position the microphone uh, with if I do then it's gonna it's gonna the, it's good even though the specs on it said that it would be able to handle the weight and even an additional 1.7 pounds it fails tremendously in certain positions that it's in theory supposed to be able to hold up to so I say all that to say this make sure you get a really heavy duty uh, 
studio arm if you're getting a heavy microphone. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of differentiate the different studio arms in the description. One thing that I've really enjoyed using recently is the microphone stand arms that I found on Amazon that you can also get at like Guitar Center, things like that. Um, they're great. They are collapsible. To me, they're a little more multi-purpose. They may be a little bigger, but as far as like whenever I'm interviewing guests, sometimes I'm out in Houston, sometimes I might be in Austin, I might be traveling the world in the seven seas. And the cool thing with those is it always gives me a way to set them up and set up the microphone. So it's great. They've never let me down. They're awesome. Super legit. Couldn't recommend them enough. And just a reminder also, folks, all the links in the description, uh, they could potentially save you a ton of money because a lot of times Amazon has sales and deals going on that supersede other market prices out there. But I say all that to say this, if you use those links, uh, it's not going to cost you anything extra. It will give me a little kickback. So I'd be highly appreciative if you use the links in the description, if you're considering opening a podcast or anything of that nature. Uh, if there's anything in this video that I forgot to bring up right now, excuse me, what I'll do is I'll, I'll add more details of what you're going to need in the description and I'll come out with a part two of this video. But right now I am out here and hold on, let me turn this around so you can see how beautiful it is out here. Man, look at that. It is just out of this world. It looks really nice outside so i'm gonna enjoy a nice hike in the woods you know and i hope y'all stay blessed lose the stress god bless i'm michael ta -da -ta, and i'm out oh and by the way don't forget to follow us on instagram if you're not doing so already square sauce media that link again is square sauce media follow us on instagram youtube uh, we're on tiktok now facebook all that good stuff all right y'all take it easy y'all know what to do What's going on, everybody? Today, we're going to be talking about the Romans Road. The Romans Road is an allegorical road. It's not a literal road in Rome, but it's based off of the writings of St. Paul and the Apostle of Christ out of the book of Romans. And it's an allegorical road to lead to salvation. So it's a great way to share the gospel with somebody. It's all scripturally backed. Everything that we're going to be talking about today, I'll leave the scriptures in the description. So if you want to reference them, memorize them, to have a useful uh, tool to help in your ministry if you're new to the faith, or if you just want something that's very easy, concise to go to to help lead others to Christ, I couldn't recommend it enough. So it starts with Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. From there, you're going to go on to Romans 6, chapter 23. For the wages of sin are death. Now, this first part of it, 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 hit, it hits home, and what it does is it, it shows everybody that we can't get to heaven by our own merit. It shows that it doesn't matter who you are. You could be the president of the United States. You could be uh, a, a drifter, a grifter. You could be whoever. You could be a movie star. You could be whoever, wh wherever. Everybody is in need of God. Everybody needs salvation because going back to Romans chapter 3, verse 23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and the wages of sin are death, right? So... Initially, it's like, oh, holy smokes, it's, <laughs> death is never a good thing, right? So we're going to keep on progressing forward, and it's going to kind of show you what the solution is. Now, if you already know who Christ is, you already know who the solution is. If you don't, keep on watching. You're going to find it out. So what's the solution? Well, Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God shows his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Well, what does that mean? Romans chapter 6, verse 23. The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. To bring it all home, we're going to go to Romans chapter 10, verse 9. And this is very crucial. If you don't believe in Christ calling on you, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I'm going to repeat that again. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So bringing it all back home, folks. All the scriptures that we mentioned today are going to be in the description below. If you have any questions that are scripturally based, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. And I also have a great resource for you all that's free of charge. It's gotquestions.org. That website again is gotquestions.org. I'll leave though, excuse me, I'll leave the link to that one just in case. Down in the description, all you got to do is click it and it's a great resource. If you have a question about anything biblically based, you can go in there and it answers a lot of different questions that a lot of different folks may have. Until next time, stay blessed, lose the stress, God bless, I'm Michael, and I'm out. <laughs> All right.